Hey, what is up everyone? Tyler Ramsby here back with another video and we are going to do some more hacking this week on Try Hack Me. We're going to dive into the box called Root Me, which is a more beginner level oriented box. So hey, if you're new to hacking, if you're on Try Hack Me, I would encourage you like try Root Me first. If you search for it, you can find it. Give it a shot. And then when you're done, come back to this video. Otherwise, if you just want to hang out with me, follow along, um, that'll work as well. And we will dive into this box together so first things first let me go ahead and share my screen with you guys and i have it right here i already launched it so that it's ready to go we got the ip um the first thing i always do is add it to my etsy host file just for ease of use so let's go there i should have grabbed that ip jump back here and we will add this we'll do our ip and this just so it resolves it by the host name and we'll call this root me dot thm save and then let's just ping it to make sure it took okay it did so the first thing i always do on a ctf on a machine i'm attacking is nmap and if you're new to hacking you may not know what that is but nmap maps the machine to use what ports are open and nothing gives us a hint of what the initial attack vector is going to be so let's go ahead and nmap and i always just do a basic nmap at first to see if i can spot anything quick so let's do a basic nmap and we have port 22, it's going to be SSH. We have port 80, which is going to be a web server. And I suppose while it does this thing, let's just go to the web server and see what it looks like. Can you root me? Okay, cool. Um, okay, I'm just going to assume it's... I'm just going to close this. Uh, let's see what version those things are. So we're going to do ports 22 and 80 dash A for all the scripts rootme.thm-v for verbose because we want to see it while it loads. And let's just see what version is running on this. And in the meantime, anytime there is a web server, kind of the next part of enumeration is you want to scan the directories. There's a bunch of tools you can do this. Derby is a simple tool. So it's just Derby. And I'm going to type in the name of the website. And this is going to go ahead and just scan through this website to see if there's any hidden directories on here. And let's go to Terminal. In the meantime, my scroll never works for some reason when on on uh, my VM. So we have port 22. Now SSH usually is not an initial attack vector. Uh, once you get credentials of some type, you can usually SSH into the machine. But the only thing you can really do with SSH without credentials is brute force. And that's not the most effective way to get access to a machine. So we see that port 80 is open. Um, and there's a few things that I take note of. One is the version. I know that that's an outdated form of Apache, so that might be our initial attack vector. The HTTP only flag not set doesn't matter a whole lot. I doubt that's the way we're going to be able to get into it, but it might be. Um, the HP title, hack IT home. And what I always like to do when I'm working on a machine is I try to make sure I take screenshots of everything just in case we get to a point where we're stuck we can come back and check out this machine. So let me go ahead and just grab this as a screenshot. And I use OneNote for my notes. Um, it doesn't really matter what you use for notes, just make sure you take notes. And I should just give you guys kind of a quick tour of my notes. These are available online. I can post the link on this video where you can download my notes and look at all my notes for free. But these are just from various classes I've attended and things I've done. So it goes through the hacking methodology from information gathering, scanning enumeration, exploitation basics, web hacking, buffer overflows, Linux privesque, Windows, Active Directory, helpful tools, and then boxes. This is my running list of boxes as I hack machines. I take notes on them as I go through them. So we are doing root me down here. Um, let's jump back to our terminal. And it looks like this is still doing its thing. I'm gonna come over here. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to pause the video for you guys, and I will have you join me as soon as this is done doing its scan. All right, welcome back. And just want to kind of show you guys what I did. So I was running Derby, which I still am, um, but other things might be faster. I didn't even label this. So over on this tab, I ran, I don't even know how to say this, Fafuff is maybe how you say it. And this found it way quicker. Um what I was looking for. And I believe it's this panel thing. And let me just jump back to the try hack me. Cause I always on some of these guided boxes, I always forget that there's questions. 
So let's just see if we can knock out some of these questions. So what did we do? We scanned the ports. We saw two ports that were open. What version of Apache is running? If you remember right, we saw that on our nmap scan and I saved it here. So that's 2.4.29. So we'll say 2.4.29. What service is running on port 22? I just know that that's always SSH. Well, I mean, unless you adjust it. It says find directories on the web server using GoBuster. That's another tool. We use Fafuff. We'll see if Derby's found it yet. Nope, Derby hasn't even found it. So Fafuff, <laughs> that's fun to say. Fafuff was a lot faster. And it found what I believe we are looking for. What is the hidden directory? That's this panel right here. I'm just going to copy that guy. And we'll type that in. Oh, I think it wanted the forward slashes. Okay. So let's check out this hidden directory. Let's see what is on here. Okay. So it's a spot to upload files. If you do CTFs, this should already set you off reverse shells. And I always just try a PHP shell first. So let's jump back over here. We'll just get rid of Derby. We don't, we don't care about Derby. And honestly, we'd probably don't need for fuff anymore either. And let's just make a directory for root me and let's go to it. There's just nothing in it. And let's locate shell.php. And we'll just use, we'll use the one I used on the Shrek box. So we're going to copy from Shrek PHP to the current directory. Oh, oh, maybe if I knew how to type, my goodness, home, Cali, Shrek, shell.php. There we go. So there's our shell. Let's just see what it looks like. Oh, so it's just a one-liner. All right. I think this will work. Um, if this one doesn't work, we can do a more advanced shell, but let's, uh, I guess, give it a shot. Um, let's get set up our netcat listener. And I believe that this was the port that I had on there. And we'll just give it a shot to see if it works. So let's select our file. Here is our shell. I mean, it's the same file, so we'll upload that. Oh, PHP not allowed. Okay, so PHP is not allowed. I wonder... There's a few things that we could possibly do when PHP isn't allowed. You can try to change the name of the file to trick them into thinking it's not PHP. So let's just try that first. So we will move shell.php and we'll call it shell.jpg.php. Sometimes it's just looking for that first one. So you can sometimes trick it that way. Um, let's just see if that works. Go to home. What was root me? Select that. Upload. Okay, so shell.php.jpg isn't working. My question is, I wonder if it does like, like would it allow me to do Python? So let's do shell.py and I'm just call it test. I just want to see if it allows me to do a Python shell. So let's upload. Whoops, maybe if I could type. Let's go to root me. And let's try Python. Maybe it will take Python. Okay. So if the web server is running Python, we might be able to do a, a Python shell. And it looks like I have one in my scripts folder. So let's copy from home. Well, let's, no, so we don't get confused. Let's remove our uh, shell one that we made. And let's locate shell.py and we'll copy Cali scripts shell.py from our current directory. And let's see what that looks like just so we have the right thing set up. So we have import. So this would depend if it's running Python 3 or what it's running. We have our IP there. So that's always going to be like your attacker box IP. So it communicates back to you. That's the port that we're listening on, I believe. Yep. And I should probably just call this, let's call it shell in anticipation that we will get a shell. Choose file, and I think it was actually in that previous one, but here's shell. And I guess we already did one shell. This, we might have to do a different one. Okay, now I wonder how we get to it. I believe I saw an uploads folder. Okay. Okay, well, that clearly did not work. 
So if we got any hints on this bee, so creating a shell, find a form to upload and get a reverse shell and find the flag. So we've tried Python. We've tried PHP. Oh, so, so it is a PHP reverse shell. We just have to bypass it. Okay. Search for file, upload, bypass, and PHP reverse shell. Well, that I, I know a few different ways that we might be able to bypass. So let's rename our shell. We'll rename it to shell.php. Gosh, shell.php for now. So there's a few different things you can rename a PHP shell to, to go past any type of authorization. But what's going on with this box, let me go back to that panel, is when you upload it, it's checking, is this a PHP file? And if yes, it rejects your file. So we have to figure out how do we bypass this so that we can upload our PHP file. So here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna type in PHP file upload bypass. Googling is a good skill that you always need, whether it's IT or hacking. So that you'll notice I already tried this. So it, for example, it might be possible to upload and execute a PHP file by renaming it JPEG dot or dot PHP dot JPEG. Actually, I did it the wrong way. Let, let's try that. Let's just see if that works. So let's move shell dot PHP to shell dot was it J PHP dot JPEG, I think. Okay, and let's just see what happens. We'll start there. We'll just try each one of these till we'll eventually get in or we'll be stuck on the outside and it'll be a really awkward video. Um, upload. Hey, success. Okay, let's just see what happens. Here it is. I don't think that worked. Nope. All right. <laughs> Pretty sure that didn't work. So. Let's try this again. Let's go back to our panel. And let's go back to Google. Oh, would I open another tab? Whoops. Whoops. Let's close this out so we don't get confused. And we'll go panel on here. All right, y'all. Let's see if we can figure this out. So that didn't work. File.php. I mean, I doubt that'll work, but heck, let's try it. You know, let's just remove our other one so that we can autofill in our stuff. And let's call it shell.ph. Whoops. Oh my goodness. Is that something like what it did? So it's looking like, is it looking for a specific case sensitivity? And if it is, we'll bypass it. Now I kind of doubt this will work since it blocked my other one, but heck, let's just let's just find out. I guess you don't know until you try. We'll select that. Upload. Okay, that is going to be a no. That is not going to work. So there's these other ones to try. So let's try .phtml now. Just try each one of these. And this is part of any type of CTF as you just keep throwing stuff at it until you eventually get it. So select. Upload. Hey, that's good. Let's see if that gave us a shell. Oh, maybe I can type uploads. Make sure my shell's still listening. All right, so that's a shell.phtml. We got it, friends. So we just did file bypass on PHP. That is good. So find the flag. All right, let's see if we can find the flag. Oh, we're in, <laughs> we're in the uploads folder. So let's just go back to home. CD, I don't know, root me, LS. Oh, maybe that's not where the flag is at, LS, CD test, LS. Okay. Maybe we need to go back to, I mean, I just want to elevate my privileges to sudo. Let's just see, I doubt this can do anything. Okay, so that's not present. So the other thing to do, I'll kind of show you guys how I use my notes is I always jump back to here. So the first thing I try to use sudo, then I try to see if there's any suid bit set. If you don't know what that is, you can Google it. Um, but let's try that next. Take a second, it's gonna send errors out. 
but it should show us if anything is set and this could be a possible attack vector. In the meantime, let's jump back to this page. Um, no, so it just says get an initial shell and do it. Oh, we already got the shell. I don't really care about user.txt. Oh, so look at that. It's asking me to search for sewed permission. So we might be on the right path. So I've kind of done this enough times, usually looking at the list, I can see what might be out of the ordinary. And I have a feeling this right here is going to be our attack vector. I'm not entirely sure though. So let's go to our trusty GTFO bins. Let's go to sewed bits. And let's just see if Python is one of these. I'm not sure if it is. And it is. So let's go to Python. And what we want is sewed bit. So if the binary has a sewed bit set, it does not drop the elevator privileges and may be abused to access the file system, escalate or maintain privilege access as a sewed backdoor. If it is used to run, blah, blah. Okay, this example creates a local sewed copy. So this should, in other words, give us shell. Um, the first thing we have to do is figure out which Python. Well, let's go to CD user bin Python. Oh, CD user bin. I mean, Python obviously isn't a directory. And now, I guess let's just try this. Here goes nothing. Hey, hey. We have root privileges. Look at that. THM privilege escalation, my friends. Let's jump back to try hack me. There's root. This is done. This was user bin Python. And I guess maybe I should find maybe I should find that user.txt thing. I'd assumed it was in home. Um I just don't know where they would have put it. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to CD back to here. See my present working directory. And we're just going to search through it to find it. I'll kind of show you guys how to do this. It's this command right here. We're just going to change it to user.txt. I mean, we already have root, so technically we've already owned the box. But just for the sake of finishing the box, go like this. Oh, it was in that, in that folder right there. So let's cd to var w. There it is. You know, it, we got the user text after our, our root flag, but hey, we still got it. That's what matters. Boom. So, hey, in this video, guys, we got initial access. We were able to do a file bypass when PHP wasn't allowed. We learned that .phtml was allowed. We used that to get our shell access. We got to the machine. We used the sewed bit set on Python. We elevated our privileges, and we just pwned this machine. So hopefully you guys learned something. Hopefully you enjoyed this. Um, other than that, I'll catch you guys next week in the next video. Peace.